This is Mike with Wichita Falls Reptile Rescue and this little fella here is named Moxie. He is an adult male desert spiny lizard. Scientific name is Celeporus Magister. Uh, he is one of more than 70 desert and twin spotted spiny lizards that I acquired from the SPCA in Arlington, Texas. Uh, the SPCA had acquired these animals as a consequence of the U.S. Global Exotic Seizure Case um, US, uh, and that, that occurred in late 2009. U.S. Global Exotics was an import export uh, exotic animal uh, importer exporter. Uh, they were under investigation for uh, among other things animal neglect and abuse and uh, nearly 30,000 animals were confiscated by Arlington Animal Services and uh, Subsequently, the animals were awarded to the SPCA by the courts, and uh, at that time when the uh, couple of months of legal battling was over with and the owners of U.S. Global Exotics uh, had fled to New Zealand to avoid prosecution by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, um, the SPCA asked organizations like mine to... Uh, uh, give them a hand with placement of these animals to uh, rehabilitate them, uh, treat the sick, and uh, find homes for them. And so myself, along with about eight volunteers, we rescued more than 2,100 uh, reptiles, uh, primarily lizards, snakes, turtles of all kinds. And so Moxie was just one of many, and uh, many of those animals died. Uh, many of them we found placements for, and um, so uh, many of the uh, spiny lizards that we received, uh, they, they needed some triage and a couple of months of rehab here. They came in with mites um, and internal parasites, and so they were treated for that, and uh, some of them required uh, 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 oral tubing with a, a, a liquid diet. Um, because they were very emaciated, uh, supplements of all kinds, uh, uh, subcutaneous fluid injections because they were very dehydrated. But uh, a lot of the spiny lizards, uh, after a couple of months, were sent on to Arizona for sanctuary. And Moxie here was just uh, one of the few who were not healthy at the time to make that trip. Uh, they weren't healthy enough, so he had to stay here for rehab and he's been here nearly a year. Um, he's made quite a bit of progress though and put on some uh, some weight and he's done well considering everything he's been through. But uh, today what I'm demonstrating for you is uh, a treatment for possible hypocalcemia. Uh, if you can see uh, he's has some uh, twitching of the toes and uh, particularly the rear limb, some uh, muscular uh, tremors and twitches. And that is a sign of possible hypocalcemia. Uh, it's uh, also called hy hypocalcemic tetany. And so one of the ways to treat that is with uh, injections of a, a calcium supplement. And then once they're stabilized and some of these uh, symptoms here have subsided, uh, we'll just place him back on some supplemental uh, oral calcium uh, supplements in the in the diet and uh, this video is made primarily for uh, wildlife rehabilitators who uh, may not be very familiar with reptiles uh, but come into contact with them on occasion um, experienced reptile hobbyists and uh, other people who have some fundamental grasp of veterinary medicine um, you certainly need to know what you're doing anytime you're you're uh, giving out medications particularly you small patients like this uh, mathematical uh, calculations comes into play and if you get a decimal space wrong uh, you can uh, you can really harm these uh, animals quite easily, so you need to know what you're doing. Um, but uh, uh, this this video is for those who have some uh, fundamental basics down on that as far as uh, rehabilitation and uh, uh, veterinary medicine. And so when you're uh, 
administering these drugs, uh, what you need is you need to calculate the, uh, the dose you're going to be administering and you do that by, uh, you need to know three things, uh, three variables first of all, you need to know the, the weight of the animal uh, in kilograms, you need to have a concentration of the drug that you're administering and you need to have a formulary reference for what is the appropriate dose for that species of animal. And so right now we've got Moxie is uh, sitting in a tray which is atop a gram scale and uh, of course these gram scales can be found just about anywhere, a hardware store or Walmart or Target. Um, they're used for everything from weighing food items to um, uh, weighing mail and uh, it, you don't have to spend a lot of money on them as long as uh, it's accurate to at least within two grams plus or minus then that's close enough for work with most reptiles. Um, if you can get something more accurate uh, to plus or minus one gram or even uh, better then of course that's uh, uh, that would be preferable. So we pre-weighed Moxie and uh, he weighs 32 grams and so I'm going to move him aside here for just a second and then show you how this is calculated. Um, I know not, not everyone in uh, rehabilitation actually calculates dosages and things like this. Uh, they may uh, primarily use a, a veterinarian who figures all this for them. Um, in my case, I, uh, I, I don't really have that luxury um, of the uh, funding to take everybody to the vet that needs it, so uh, I've had to learn uh, the uh, reptile veterinary medicine pretty much uh, on my own dime and uh, uh, also because there's not a lot of veterinarians around that uh, that will see reptiles or if they will see them uh, that really uh, are not that uh, capable in their knowledge with reptiles. Uh, so uh, getting back to this here, what we need to do is uh, take the, uh, uh, the way you figure this, again, if I didn't mention before, it's uh, dose times the weight of the animal divided by the concentration. And so what we need to do here is input uh, 32 grams, which is his weight, and then to convert that to kilograms, you'll divide by 1,000. And then you want to take that, uh, multiply that by the dose, which uh, in this case we're going to be using uh, 100 milligrams per kilogram. Now this is according to uh, Douglas Mater's Reptile Medicine and Surgery Manual, which has a formulary for uh, dosages of various reptile species in, in the back, and the calcium gluconate for uh, hypocalcemia and uh, tetany is called for for anywhere from 10 to 100 milligrams per kilogram, and so we're going to use the uh, 100 milligrams per kilogram dose. And so uh, again, let's just start over here. You're going to take the weight of the animal in grams, uh, divide that by 1,000, and that's going to give you the converted uh, weight in kilograms, which in this case is 0 0.032. Multiply by the dosage you're going to be giving according to the formulary, which is 100 milligrams per kilogram. And then you divide by the concentration of the medication, which again in this case is 230 milligrams per milliliter. And the answer that you come up with, and I recommend doing it uh, a couple of times to make sure you have it correct, uh, the answer we have is 0 0.0139 uh, cc or milliliter. Uh, cc's and milliliters are the, the same measure. Um, and so in this case, since that's such a, a small measure, uh, it's not going to hurt to round up slightly for this calcium gluconate. Uh, I don't recommend uh, uh, rounding up. You, you kind of have to use some uh, uh, your own judgment, uh, but uh, be capable in your knowledge. Uh, there are some things like anti-inflammatories and um, some antibiotics that are uh, nephrotoxic, which in other words, uh, can damage the kidneys 
that uh, I won't round up on. If anything, I may round down to be safe. But in this case, again, our uh, solution is 0 0.0139 uh, milliliter, and we're going to round that up slightly to uh, one and a half units, which would be 0 0.015 uh, milliliter. So, uh, and I've already uh, pre swabbed him with uh, his forelimb with chlorhexidine gluconate. Uh, which we have here, and this is a 2% chlorhexidine gluconate solution. Um, when I, you can also use betadine uh, or uh, any other type of uh, you know topical antimicrobial. I prefer to use the chlorhexidine gluconate when I have it because its spectrum of activity is broader. It kills a, a wider range of microbes than uh, many of the other uh, antimicrobials. Um, and you just want to make sure that uh, you're using the, uh, for this sort of thing topically, you use the chlorhexidine gluconate um, rather than the diacetate. Um, uh, there is a chlorhexidine uh, diacetate uh, uh, formulation out there which is uh, a lot more toxic. That's uh, mainly meant for decontaminating de uh, utensils and uh, the floors of kennels and uh, uh, that sort of thing, horse stalls and every, everything else. Uh, that's not the, uh, the diacetate uh, version is not really meant for topical uh, disinfection. Um, now I've also got my uh, syringe here, half a milliliter, which would be 50 units. Um, uh, a full milliliter is 100 units, and so most of your one milliliter syringes are uh, marked out uh, at, in, uh, you know, as 10, 20, 30, and whatnot. As I wrangle him up again here real quick, and so I have our uh, syringe preloaded with the uh, calcium. And we're going to be giving him right in the uh, what would be uh, basically the bicep, uh, the intramuscular injection. And um, what you want to do when you're administering these uh, either a subcutaneous or an intramuscular injection um, uh, to a reptile, you want to make sure you go under the scale and uh, do not attempt to penetrate through a scale because that's going to be really difficult. Uh, you're going to have to force the needle and you're probably going to uh, hurt the animal and or yourself. Um, intravenous injections for animals this small is not very common because it's, it's very hard to actually uh, hit the vein. Uh, so most of the time when we're uh, administering uh, medications by injection with uh, very small reptiles, you're going to do subcutaneous or intramuscular uh, and in some cases where I need uh, fluid resuscitation, a, a large volume with an animal that's really in a critically dehydrated state, I'll use an uh, intracholemic injection, uh, which is uh, in, the, in the body cavity. Um, but uh, again, what you're going to do is take your needle and uh, you want to insert underneath the scale and as long as you're inserting underneath the scale it's not going to be difficult at all. Um, the needle goes in just, just as easy as it does for any uh, mammal or bird or anything else. Um, if you're having to push real hard to uh, get that stick then you're, uh, you're probably going through a scale rather than underneath it so just uh, reposition as needed and uh, It'll go in just like uh, warm butter. And that's it. He is done for today. And um, we're going to follow up with uh, injections uh, uh, every couple of days here as needed uh, till these tremors uh, get arrested a little bit. And then, like I said, we will just put him back on a normal uh, calcium supplementation in his diet. And so for right now, he's going to He's going to go back to his girl who's waiting for him back in the terrarium. Her name is uh, Roxy. So we have Roxy and Moxie. And uh, 
she is actually a twin spotted spiny lizard a uh, 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 subspecies but uh, they're they're both related so and I'm sure he'll be glad for me to be done with him and that's it